exploring complex systems. Oh, you're in for a treat with this one. We're diving into anti-fragility in complex dynamical systems, a research paper that introduces a concept that might just change how you think about resilience. Anti-fragility. Definitely a fascinating field, no doubt about it. It's a pretty dense paper, sure, but trust me, it's packed with real-world applications that'll get you thinking. Okay, so anti-fragility is more than just, like, being tough or resilient, right? Yeah. What does it actually mean? Exactly. We're not just talking about surviving a tough situation here. Anti-fragility is about systems that actually get better because of challenges. Yeah, disruptions actually make them stronger. They don't just withstand volatility. They use it to their advantage. So they kind of feed off that chaotic energy, become even stronger because of it. Exactly. Think of a business, right? Not just surviving a recession, but coming out of it even more efficient, more profitable, or even better, the human body. Our immune systems, they don't just fight off infections, they learn and become even more resistant to those threats in the future. That's anti-fragility in action. Okay, now that is a powerful concept. This paper, though, it, it goes even deeper, right? Like it gets into the mechanics of how this actually works. There's even a mathematical definition in there, if I remember correctly. You're right, there is. It gets into this concept called convexity. Now, I don't want to bore you with the math, but imagine like a trampoline, small bounce, not much happens, right? Big jump, you're flying. Okay. So convexity, it's about systems that have that trampoline effect. Yeah. Small changes, especially negative ones, they can actually lead to big positive outcomes. Love the analogy. So it's not just about handling change, but how much a system can actually benefit from it, yeah. especially from disruptions, it seems. And the paper, it breaks down anti-fragility into three different types, right? Intrinsic, inherited, and induced. It does. Imagine building a house, right? Mm -hmm. Intrinsic anti-fragility is like, the foundation of that house, the inherent design that lets it benefit from disorder. So it's about how the house is built to withstand, say, an earthquake right from the start. Exactly. A great example from the paper is traffic flow. Think about how delays at an intersection, they're actually related to the traffic volume. As the volume hits a certain point, delays increase like crazy. Shows the intersection's fragility. But get this. Understanding that fragility is the first step to designing systems that can actually optimize flow, even with all the traffic fluctuations. The paper even mentions these anti-fragile controllers. So with the traffic, intrinsic anti-fragility is about knowing those weaknesses yeah. and designing systems that adapt and get better because of them. You got it. Recognizing that variability is going to happen and designing systems that not only tolerate it, but use it to their advantage. This is fascinating stuff. Mm. So we've covered intrinsic anti-fragility, the foundation of our anti-fragile house, right? Mm. What about that next layer, inherited anti-fragility? Inherited anti-fragility, that's all about learning and adapting over time. If the foundation is how the house is built, inherited anti-fragility is like those architectural plans, passed down and refined through generations, each one making the house more resilient. This is where it gets really interesting because it connects to the idea of evolution itself. Evolution. Okay, now I'm really intrigued. How does that tie into anti-fragility? Well, think about it. Biological systems, right? From the tiniest bacteria to us humans, we've been evolving for like millions of years, becoming more and more robust. So it's like they've faced all these challenges and learned from them, passed those lessons down through their genes. Exactly. Like antibiotic resistance. Classic example. You've yeah. got this population, right? And through natural selection, they develop ways not just to survive a threat, but to thrive in spite of it. So the bacteria are becoming more anti-fragile over time. I'm starting to see how this inherited anti-fragility works. And it goes beyond just biology, too. The paper talks about machine learning, robotics, all sorts of cool stuff. Imagine robots that get better at navigating, say, a warehouse. Not just by avoiding obstacles, but by actually learning from them, optimizing their paths. So they're like evolving their algorithms based on real world experience. Each run makes them more anti-fragile. You got it. Now, let's shift gears a bit. Yeah. We've talked about the inherited blueprint of our anti-fragile house, right? Time to talk about induced anti-fragility. This is like actively reinforcing the structure, making it even stronger than the original design. Interesting. So if intrinsic is the foundation, inherited is those refined blueprints, induced anti-fragility is about proactively going in and strengthening the house. Exactly. Strategically applying stress, if you will, like a workout routine, but for resilience. Mm -hmm. The paper has this fascinating example with cancer therapy. Cancer therapy. Now that sounds counterintuitive. How does anti-fragility apply to something as serious as cancer? It's all about understanding how the system works. Traditional chemo, it usually involves giving drugs on a fixed schedule, right? But what if 
instead of hitting those cancer cells with the same dosage, same timing, we use a little variability. Okay, now that's got me thinking. How would that work? The paper calls it adaptive cancer therapy. Basically, you change up the treatment schedule to, like, outsmart the tumor cells. So you might have periods of high dosage, then longer breaks, making it less predictable. And this variability, it can actually make it harder for the cancer to adapt and become resistant. So by introducing a bit of controlled chaos, you're using the cancer's own adaptability against it. You got it. Constantly changing the game plan, keeping those cancer cells guessing. That's incredible. Sounds like a powerful application of induced anti-fragility. Are there other areas where we see this maybe something a bit closer to everyday life? Absolutely. Let's go back to robotics for a sec. Figure five in the paper, it shows how you can design robots that learn not just from their successes, but also from their failures. Imagine a robotic arm in a factory setting. Okay, I'm picturing it. How does this robot arm demonstrate induced anti-fragility? Mm -hmm. I'm picturing it. How does this robot arm demonstrate induced anti-fragility? So say this robot arm, right, it runs into a problem, like a, a minor jam or something. Now, instead of just stopping cold, an anti-fragile design would let it analyze that jam, maybe run some tests, and try to find a way around it. So next time it hits a similar snag, boom, it's got a solution ready. It actually becomes stronger because of those initial hiccups. So it's not about avoiding errors altogether, yep. but using them to make the system smarter, more adaptable in the long run. Exactly. And this idea, it applies to all sorts of systems, really. You've got supply chains that can reroute stuff when there's a disruption, software programs that take user feedback and use it to patch vulnerabilities, the list goes on. This deep dive has been really eye-opening. We've gone from traffic jams to cancer treatments to robots that learn from their mistakes. But for someone listening who's not a scientist or engineer, what's the key takeaway here? Why should they care about anti-fragility? That's the million dollar question, right? Yeah. And the thing is, anti-fragility, it's not just some abstract theory. It's a way of thinking, a powerful mental model that can totally change how we approach things. Decision making, assessing risk, even personal growth. So it's not just about bouncing back, but bouncing back stronger. You got it. Think about how you personally deal with setbacks. Do they derail you or do you learn from them? Adapt, come out stronger on the other side. That's anti-fragility in action. Powerful stuff. And it sounds like this applies not just to us as individuals, but to how we design everything. Yeah. Businesses, communities, the whole shebang. Absolutely. If we can shift away from these rigid structures that break under pressure and instead create systems that are adaptable, anti-fragile, we can navigate all the uncertainty in the world and even find opportunity in the unexpected. This has been a truly fascinating look at anti-fragility. Definitely given me a lot to think about, and I hope it's done the same for everyone listening. Keep those questions coming, keep experimenting, and don't be afraid of a little chaos now and then. It might just make your systems and yourself even stronger. Great advice. Until next time, everyone, keep exploring those complex systems. And remember, a little disruption can be the spark for some incredible growth.